Higgs boson is saying, what's your opinion on Sweden Gate? I have no idea what Sweden Gate is. Let's read together. Let's learn about this together. See, it doesn't even, it doesn't even, I can't even show the question because it's covering the screen. I mean, the article. All right, here. Truth about Sweden Gate. Are, Sw are Swedes the strangest people walking on earth? Yes or no? Okay. What is this? Why is this? As someone who lived there for a couple of years, I always find it funny when the internet kicks the door open and reveals Sweden standing with its pants down round its milky white ankles looking affronted. It's a country people think they know about but don't really. Uh, okay, what happened? What's Sweden Gate? So it was recently following an incident that has come to be known as Sweden Gate. Someone posted a response to an in innocent question on Reddit. What is the weirdest thing you had to do at someone else's house because of their culture or, or religion? Oh no, this sounds dangerous. Uh, a user reported that they remember going to a Swedish friend's house as a child and being asked to stay in another room while the family he was visiting ate dinner together. Many Swedish people replied saying, well, yeah, that's the way we do it here. What the hell? Wait. Being asked to stay. So, wait, they don't. You go to their house, and instead of like giving you food, they tell you to go sit in the room while they eat food. That doesn't make any sense. Sounds bad, doesn't it? People on the internet from all over the world erupted in protests that not giving someone food in their home, in their culture, was at the very least incredibly rude and at the worst tantamount to abuse. Among my own friends, I heard strong reactions particularly uh, from people who are not white. Yeah, it is rude. Guys, are we being racist to Swedish uh, people to say that they are their culture? Yeah, guys, we could like crap on uh, Swedish culture here together. One said that she was rocked by reading about Sweden Gate because for an Asian family, not force feeding your guests is an abomination. <laughs> A British Indian friend said she felt actively guilty that she didn't have enough different types of milk to offer someone who stayed o over at her house recently, a person she didn't even invite to do so. The sheer flabbergasted horror people... Th okay, so I'm not going to read the rest of this, but yeah, that is crazy. That is insane. What's the explanation for this? Swedes are defensive. They have some good reasons to be. Lots of things are good about Sweden. And hearing American or British people dump on their nice little country for, for minor indiscretions, like being weird about laundry must... Uh, laundry must... Oh, uh, must think. Given they have some of the most robust social welfare... Pro okay, guys, you have some good stuff, but this is weird. Okay, so let me see what the question is. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Apparently, in, in Western Nordic countries, you're less likely to get food as a guest. There is a case where a kid went to their friend's place. His mom made dinner only for him and kept the, uh, the first waiting. This is a common occurrence, apparently, in Sweden. I even heard Swedish moms would hand over a belt. <gasps> What? I even heard Swedish moms would hand over a bill to their guests if they had to make food. That is insane. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? That does sound, that does sound insane. That shouldn't be allowed. That should be legal. I don't know what to feel like about this. I'm just learning this 
as we okay the entire twitter debunked on twitter for uh, uh dunked on sweden for this mostly coming from everyone from africa's india indians americans what's the point of being enlightened if you become sh uh crappy host okay so i don't think that's fair i i do think that the fact that they have better welfare and better okay so okay let's be to be fair to sweden that i don't think that's a fair point exposure okay you're saying what's the point of being enlightened if you're going to be crappy host okay honestly as bad as this sounds um i rather be sweden than india okay i rather be sweden than iran okay so in india and iran when somebody comes to your house you feed them and you don't give them the bell okay but in sweden apparently you tell them to go in the room while you eat because you're not going to give them food or if you feed them you give them the bell which sounds insane but with with that insanity i still think sweden is superior to iran and india when it comes to many things including the standard of living including the enlightenment values including security including not having the, like in Iran, the government coming after you for the thing, for your opinions, including unlike India, having the caste system, all right? So, okay, so Higgs was saying last point was a day, yes. So, but while Sweden is superior to all these other countries, in the, Sweden is, is superior to all African countries, to all Middle Eastern countries, and to superior to India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan, that doesn't mean that just because they're superior that we can't attack them on this culture, right? We're like, hey, good, yeah, you're a better country. But at the same time, we could be like, this is insane. However, I'm trying to question my assumptions. Is this really bad? Or is it because we have normalized so much the way we treat guests that it just sounds bad like i'm trying to because like i'm being i'm having an internal conflict right now okay because i'm like that is insane and then i'm asking myself why is that insane and I'm like well because taking over your guests is good and then i'm like asking myself well why is that good well because obviously that's the right thing to do and i'm like oh my god i just found an assumption that i have that is was uh, uh, forced upon me by society and i don't have a good reason for it you know what i mean like maybe this is one of those things that Maybe the Swedes got it right. Maybe we just assume that this is the right thing to do and we never question it because of course it's the right thing to do. But is it really the right thing to do? It, what, what if the Swedes are like, you? the rest of the world is crazy. We have it the right way. Let me see what you guys are thinking. Uh, Idris is saying the most logical answer I've seen from Swedes is that the child that child move uh, is that ch uh, what ch I think you mean children that children move very freely on their own and a parent could end up having 10 kids in their house at dinner time so feeding them be pricey you know, maybe, maybe Swedes, maybe the Swedish model is better because I'm thinking about like we have normalized the idea that you have to, you have to take care of your guests, you have to be hospitable, you have to go out of your way to take. Like I grew up in a Persian culture, and that is what you do. You bring out everything, right? You bring out all the you you feed the guests better than you feed your own children, right? And you have we have normalized this as a value, as a virtue. It's virtue signal. This is a virtue signal. I am a better host. No, I'm a better host. And it's pricey. And we're like, we just assume that that's a good thing to do. But why should you? Why should you? Why can't people who want to eat at your house pay for the food? Like, it's not their food. It's your food. Hmm. Hmm. My assumptions are being challenged. Guys, I might be like... I might be, I was trying to be racist against Swedes, but I unfortunately, I don't know if I can. Maybe Higgs Boson is saying, I think they took individualism to an extreme level. How much do you favor collectivism? This is not about individualism. 
or collectivism. This is more about a virtue that we have accepted as a norm. And we never assume like, why can people, why do people have the right to show up at your house and you have to feed them with your hard earned money? Why is that? A, why do, why do, why have we turned into that, uh, turned that into such a virtue where, you know, where people can, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Shayash is saying, feed your guests, make them fat so that they can never walk to you again. Hey, it's for food. They will walk. Picky saying, basically, we want to make our guests obese. Um, Bobby is saying, it's a virtue signal to feed your friends. It's part of our culture to sh share meals. It brings people together to enjoy their time alone. Okay, I think the act by itself could be seen as a part of positive. It's a virtue if it's expected. That's the difference. Okay. So I think it has not. I think like when it goes from seeing like, for example, uh, from seeing from being seen as a nice thing to do. It is a nice thing to do. But when it's an expectation, then you don't get the benefit of being thanked for doing something that is nice to do because it is a the norm in, in instead you get the punishment from not doing it you've been seen less of in society so it's not a positive it's not something just like uh, that to be appreciated is something that is forced it's something that if you don't do you look badly upon right so that makes it a virtue. That makes it not just a good act because a good act is something that is not expected, but if you do it, people will appreciate it. A virtue is something that you have to do to signal to society that I'm part of society. Please, dear society, please accept me as your member. Please, please, please don't shame me. Please, please, please don't ostracize me. Don't see me as other. I have to do this. If somebody shows up at my house, I have to, I have to do this or our society will crap on me. And I think it makes, it might actually make sense to not turn that to, into a norm. It makes sense to be like, hey, it's not a norm. So if you do it, we're off, we're shocked and surprised and pleasantly, uh, you know, we're like um, thankful. We're very thankful, right? If you actually remove this from a norm, then you're actually your, your good deed will be appreciated even more because people didn't expect that. But if, if it's a demand, if it's an expectation, then people who don't want to do it are doing it just so that they have their membership card, uh, card stamped in the society. Gaijin Americans say it helps build bridges, though. It helps build bridges if it's not an expectation because it actually destroys bridges, bridges if it's an expectation and you fail. If it's not an expectation, then when you do it, people are like, oh, my God, what a gesture of friendship. My God, you, you, sir, you, ma'am, you are, you impress us so much. You really are giving us all this food for free. Okay. That build bridges. But if everybody thinks that you should be doing that and you're just doing what everybody expects you to do, then it doesn't build bridges. Oxymoron is saying, I like Swedish culture a bit, <laughs> a bit now. Yeah. I, I don't know. Gert. I don't know which one is better. I'm just thinking like, maybe we just accepted these things because we were brainwashed. That this is the right way to, to do. Maybe we should just challenge our assumptions. Bobby is saying, if it's a random person you didn't invite over, you have no obligation. But if you invite people over, you cannot uh, eat without inviting them to join you. That's true. Yeah, that's a fair point. Okay, I think like maybe this is like, uh, but in our culture, I don't know about your culture, Bobby. Okay, if as a kid. If I just bring my friends over and my parents didn't expect that, they are going to feed them. They're going to be like, come eat lunch with us. Come eat our food, okay? And they didn't expect it. Like our kid just brought in a whole bunch of like an army of children and now we have to feed them all, okay? So maybe that's a good midway, right? A middle way. If, if, the, if, the, if the people who are in charge of the household, if they say, hey, come to our house, okay? They have to be specific. Come to our house and eat our food, okay? Maybe like, you know, something like that. So if you're inviting them, you have to feed them because that's why you invited them, okay? 
But if people just randomly show up to your house, um, maybe unlike the Indian, maybe Indian culture or Arab culture or Persian culture, you should not be expected to feed them because you did not you did not expect them to come. Maybe that, that's the midway. That's the midway. We didn't know you're coming, so we're sorry. We're gonna eat, and there's no food. We're gonna eat now. You're here. There's no food for you. I'm sorry. We didn't expect. We didn't invite you. That's the that's the midpoint. Oh no, Asian American just revoked my Asian card. Damn. Idris is saying, actually, this gifting contest behavior is way is a way to show your status in society and what you can afford. Maybe Sweden is so wealthy that this status symbol is not so meaningful anymore. Oh my God, that's very interesting. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, the government feeds you if you're poor, man. Why do I have to feed you? But um, I don't know. I just think like I think it's a good mission this back and forth. I think we found a good midpoint. Okay, if I invited you, I will feed you. If you show up at my house, I don't care that you're in my house. If I'm if it's time for me to eat, there's no food for you. I didn't invite you. Okay, I think that's a good mid. That's a good in in between. Yeah, the oxymoron is saying it's sort of like splitting bills with the girl rude in a classical sense. Yeah. I think if your girlfriend makes more money than you, maybe she should be paying. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.